Hey, YouTubers. <clears throat> well, here I am again. I didn't die yet. I didn't go to jail yet. I didn't go to the hospital yet. I didn't go to town yet. I was going to go to town the other day to see Maisie Hirono, our super duper representative in uh, the federal government, but um, she didn't come over to the Big Island. Uh, like I thought, she sent a couple of her girls over to help people with their paperwork. So I talked to, um, I think I told you on the last tape, I talked to somebody who said she'd put a fire under her and get her to make more uh, YouTube. So there's one I did as a slideshow. Uh, there's also a narration with it, but we'll just do the slideshow uh, so that uh, you have something to look at while I talk to you. Because Today, I want to talk to you about uh, manufacturing plants. Now, I remember Michael Moore covered this subject uh, back a while in his um, documentary, and he's super duper guy, because he got in there and uh, um, a lot of haters uh, jumped all over him, and uh, he's a big guy. He could take six or seven or eight guys uh, hanging on him at one time, probably, but um, nevertheless, um, Manufacturers is my subject. Now, if I could just stay on it, uh, I'll get through this a lot faster. Because what I want to say is, if a manufacturer in the United States is making goods for us to use, as well as everybody around the world, that's wonderful. But what I can see of what's going on is that all the manufacturers of stuff I buy have evidently moved to China because everything I buy says made in China on it. So I'm thinking that the only manufacturers that are left in the United States are making more stuff, then that is why we have such a problem at the border because they want our war stuff along with our money for the drugs they're bringing us. And the only reason they're bringing us drugs is because they want the war stuff and they want the money. So if we didn't manufacture the war stuff, uh, then we wouldn't have all those wars on the other side of those borders fighting us back, would we? But it's just we all, Aliakala on Maui, and my credit. Isn't it just amazing that? We can produce war stuff and keep it in our country so that our conglomerates and our corporations and our CEOs can make all the money off of that war stuff because it's so easy to sell it to our Congress people, our senators and our representatives because uh, they sell fear with it. Of course, it's their lobbyists and manufacturers say, well, I just make it, it's just my job. But let's look at that a little more seriously now. All the things we want to buy are in Walmart and they came from China. Now, how much of the stuff we want to buy in Walmart is manufactured in the United States? Just the bullets and the guns and the camouflage uniforms? And the buttons and the belts that go with the war military uniform and the helmets and the and the hats and the the uh, spy glasses and all of that stuff manufactured in the United States and all we manufacture is war goods. It's so pretty. And I just want to cry because I cannot believe. If I were a manufacturer, that I would want to let other products go overseas to China while I make war stuff. The bullets, the guns, the vehicles, the airplanes. And why do we have to make war goods? Is that the only thing there is uh, to make money with? And isn't that a shame? 
there's two movies that come to mind that I think were very good in explaining things to me a long time ago, but I can't help to think about them, and I probably still got them on videotape. But I think since uh, I might have bought them on DVD, I am a firm believer in buying uh, rather than stealing uh, that sort of thing. So, uh, Air America and Deal of the Century. Remember those two movies? Uh, Chevy Chase uh, and Deal of the Century and uh, Mel Gibson and uh, Robert Downey Jr. in Air America. What great movies and didn't those writers tell us a lot about not only what was going on then, but what's still going on and what's going on now. And it, it looks comical on the one hand, but on the other hand, man, those writers were dead serious. So, manufacturers, what have we got left? Now we need those manufacturers to make solar panels and wind generators and batteries that will last longer and cost less. All this stuff, uh, the more our manufacturers manufacture it, the more the price will come down. So everybody has some. And that was what was so neat about the 1950s, was that all of a sudden, uh, uh, Westinghouse and uh, uh, this is before IBM, right, when they came out with the refrigerators and the stoves and the, even the dishwasher was even newer than that. Uh, just stoves and refrigerators. Remember that Disneyland uh, Circle Theater that went around and told you uh, when things happened? Uh, so um, I think we need to take another look at our manufacturers. Just what are they making? If they have any cause or this ruckus at the Mexican border, then we need to talk to those manufacturing people. What are they doing making things that are so in demand across the border uh, that they, that the, I mean, Amarillo's running out of guns and, or did run out of guns and bullets. And you say, why? And why is Amarillo waiting for more? So more people can kill each other? I do not believe in killing people in any way, shape, or form. I say talk it out and get those linguistics to help you. And there's an education that I think would be worthwhile. Learn linguistics. Learn all the languages so that you can go and talk instead of bullets and guns. Uh, the money needs to go into teaching classrooms full of linguistics and other things about what's going on around the world so we can better operate in a world market without guns and bullets. So let's work on that, huh? Hey, I might not be here tomorrow, but you're here. Get it done. Get it done for all of us who hang out up there if there isn't up there to hang out in and watch you or maybe those don't look. I mean, think happy. Think healthy and think high, and I'll do the same.